Well, it's been about a month, month and a half since my last video about the Turbo Manifold. And in that time, took a month off essentially to build a shed to then make more space in the garage for me to work in. But I didn't just build a shed, I kept working on the car. So I'm just gonna start probably doing update videos because it's a lot less stress on me and I can get a lot more stuff done in a timely fashion without having to worry about how to film things and everything like that. So, yeah, this is probably just how it's gonna be now. Less criticism from the internet, but I mean, I don't really care. It's how I do it. Everyone's gonna have a problem with whatever I do, but. So, yeah, we'll just do update videos, stuff like that, things that are done now that weren't done the last video. So, yeah. Thing that I did was I got my radiator out and I don't know if you all remember, but it has nice little brackets in the trunk now because it just sits right on these, which are 3D printed, and then it'll evacuate everything out the deck lid. But something that I had was I had little pinholes right here and right there that I had to fill. Yes, it doesn't look great. It's not welded. It's aluminum soldered. And then I also... Put a dash 20 on here to match up here this side did just have a standard hose fitting on it but we're not going to do that we're going to aim to have literally no hoses on here that are held down with hose clamps no barb fittings nothing because i've had bad experiences with lines blowing off and it's not fun because you go and everything's great and all of a sudden things not going great so Everything's either gonna be AN fittings or different types of clamps, which I'll show you in a minute, that basically mitigate no hose clamps, nothing anywhere. The only hose clamps I'm pretty sure will be in the gas tank because I can't get around the fittings that are on the fuel pump. So I redid the pin radiator and so far no leaks. It's holding water just fine. If you can see that it's filled up with water all the way to there. So it's definitely getting to where the pinholes were and yeah so that's that's all good i was also able to source you know facebook marketplace Internet. so this is a mishimoto type r or r line intercooler which is basically their biggest universal intercooler so it's four four inches thick and just got it mounted on a little cross member that i made up myself with some um, Aluminum from the recycled metal store But these are the types of clamps I was gonna mention these are essentially call them heavy-duty o-ring based clamps and oh Yeah, also we got to talk about the turbo, but these o-ring based clamps They use a pinned let's See if I can do this one-handed so a pinned sort of clamp that holds around that sort of fitting let me just pause this a second and then I can pop this off and show you. Okay, all right, we're back. Also, it's like 90 some degrees in Michigan now. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but, so if I look horribly sweaty, that'd be why. So, these are these clamps. So you have one fitting that gets welded to whatever you're trying to join. And they have this O-ring in here. That O-ring seals the inside of this sleeve. So there's another mirroring piece just like this that's welded to here. This essentially makes it so that these O-rings seal on this sleeve. And then this collar piece actually fits around. If I can get in there and show you that. It gets in and around these clamps so that they can't blow apart. So all that this piece is doing is keeping these two pieces from blowing apart. And this is actually sealing to here. And I think these are rated for 100 PSI. And if you buy them from a US based distributor, they're about 100 bucks a piece, or you go to Amazon and they're 30. So these are Amazon specials. So, benefits of these is they can't blow apart. They're essentially hard lines without being hard, they still allow some degrees of movement. So like these are still, these are fully assembled clamps, they're sealing, but since there's that enough gap in there, 
they can actually slide in and out. I think they're rated at like seven degrees of play in any omnidirection because it's all circular. So those are done. That means all the charge pipes are done. The intercooler is mounted. And now, oh, on to the next thing. Intake manifold. This is something that I designed and basically had it laser cut. These are some aluminum extrusions that I got off eBay. Just cut them down to size. They're pretty well port matched. They're not perfect. There's, I think it's about 80% effective area versus the overall port size. But since it's going to be boosted by that thing, then there's, I mean, you can only shove as much air in as the valve is going to allow you to have open. It's not naturally aspirated. I'm not super worried about manifold design. It's not perfect. Yes, I understand that it tapers down here. But look, here is my strut tower. I still need stuff to move through here. Same reason that this is where it is. Strut tower is right here. The head's still here. There's no room for anything. But... So yeah, we have charge pipes done, turbo's been modified, we got a nice 3 inch kind of 90 cast right here to this clamp. I was going to have the outlet down here, and some of you might remember that, but as I was just kind of playing around with the system, finagling it around, I just kind of accidentally spun it one way and it looked like it was going to work here. I'm like, hey, you know, why not? It gets this further away from the exhaust, allows more air to get through here to hopefully keep the temp down from here to here less heat soak it's all around a better idea and it actually worked better for the outlet to be here to get to here than to start way down here and have to wrap up and around and stuff like that so I essentially relearned how to weld aluminum on this guy so if you look the aluminum welds get pretty bad on this they get better I still have some pitting that I have to go through on here but can also blame my welder because one of the lines was broken and I didn't realize it until I was done with everything on this. The welds get a little bit better here. And they're actually not that bad over here. I'm kind of proud of these. They actually look decent enough. So, I think that's the synopsis of an update. So, essentially, turbo's on. It's plumbed. Well, not plumbed. The charge pipes are done. Sourced in an air cooler. Got it all mounted up. We even got a little bottom brace all the way across because it's simple and it works. And then run from here to the factory throttle body, which I also had to weld with one of those fittings to make it all work. But no hose clamps, no silicone connectors, nothing to blow off. That's the whole point of this is take the time. This takes a lot longer than just taking some Aluminum things, cutting them, piecing them together, going from there. This is the process that it takes to build a car on a budget. You can spend all the money you want and get it done as fast as you want. But if you want to do it yourself, you want to have pride in what you do, do it yourself. This is, what it, this is just what it takes. It took me six to seven months to find an air cooler for a decent price where it didn't make sense to just buy it new instead. I think this whole goal that I'm after is to prove that you don't need a ton of money to build a fast track car. And that if you do it yourself, take the time, put in the effort, you can have something that's just as formidable as a car you paid way too much for. So on that note, this is where we are. Everything's going pretty darn well as of late because I've cared less about filming videos and cared less about what people think and just focused on getting stuff done. So now we're getting really, really close to actually pulling the engine back out of the car, changing the head over to the head that we want because that head's not as good as the one I have on the bench over there. Rebuilding it, freshen it up, not necessarily rebuild, but maybe new bearings, new timing chain, stuff like that, just longevity sort of things. That way I can go into this knowing that Hey, it should all hold together. It isn't going to be a weak point that I didn't think about. Pull everything out, button up the engine, mount the alternator, do all the dry sump stuff, and then actually spend 
hundreds of dollars on AN fittings and then get this whole thing plumbed up. So, until then, well, see you.